Hi, in this video of WPF, we are going to discuss a very important concept regarding WPF itself called dependency properties. Basically, these dependency properties are something which will give you a property which is not even provided to a particular object or by default. For example, when the WPF was newly launched in the initial releases of it, you don't even have the property such as name for many controls. But using this dependency property itself, you could have provided the name property to the controls. Name is just an example. But yes, even now, if you want to perform and you want to give some additional property to any particular object, you can go through the dependency properties. It's a specific type of property which extends the CLR property. All right, it gives you an extension. Whenever you want to put some dependency property, that particular class which is defining the dependency property must have derived from the dependency object class. All right, so make sure that you are using any particular class for the dependency property which is getting derived from the dependency object class itself. For example, if you are working in a button, with a button, maybe there are some events like is mouse over, is mouse out, which is not by default provided to that particular class, but you may come across a situation where you, where you want to use such properties. So you can go through the dependency properties at that particular time. Many of the UI controls uh, class are derived from the dependency object class and they support dependency properties all right so like any particular object like control button or text box they will be derived from that in case you want you can also create a custom dependency property by your own by deri by deriving your particular class with the dependency object class so let's see a practical implementation where i'll show you some predefined dependency properties and we'll also see how to create the custom dependency property now here in WPF to see the involvement of dependency properties you can go to any particular class like this window class or any control like button label text box you will find that in their definition you there are so many dependency properties so let's go to the definition of this window by pressing F12 and as soon as I reach here you will find that okay there are so many dependency properties out there all right so these dependency properties are basically static and read only static because when you create a dependency property you want them to be applied uniformly in all the objects so it should not be object dependent so it has to be static and once it is initialized it should not get changed so it is read only so as you can see in the window it is having so many de dependency properties similarly let's go to the uh, base class that is content control if i'll go to the definition again i will find so many dependency properties and similarly in the control class you will again get so many dependency properties like background property brush border thickness which you will see like in the future we'll be working on these properties like if you want to change the background font family border thickness of any particular window or label or something you will get these properties and these are all dependency properties which actually represents some normal CLR properties as well so this is about the predefined properties now let's see if I want to create my own property and my own dependency property you may call it a custom dependency property so basically for creating the custom dependency property what I will do I will create a user control though we are going to cover the user control in a great detail in the coming videos here I am just giving a very simple example so for adding the user control what you will have to do you will right click over the project name you will say add and you can come to the user control all right as soon as you will click you here you can see user control WPF there is also a user control which is similar uh, to the which is just a C sharp one all right but here I will go to the user control of WPF which will give me a XAML file as well so here I have already added one user control with the name DP control that is dependency property control let's see what I have done there so here is a small window in which I have added the text block okay let me remove this margin I think it's not required alright I have saved it so in this grid like you are working with the normal 
WPF application, it will give you the base tag that is the user control and inside that there is a grid in which I have added one text block alright with the name text block 1 and what else I have done I'll show you that in the CS file so in the CS file of this DP control there are so many things I have done so first of all there is a static read only prop dependency property with the name set text property alright you can also create the code snippet like prop da dp that is define a dependency property as soon as you will do it will create you the uh, syntax means a template for the dependency property but I have already created a full so let me explain that so as I said whenever you will define a dependency property it will be static and read only so we'll have to do that one more thing that I didn't tell at that particular time that the naming convention the name must get ended with the property word like set text property even if you will go through any of the dependency property predefined dependency property you will find so many dependency properties and all are ended with the property word all right all are ending with the property word so whether it's predefined or user defined it should be ended with the property word all right now dependency property dot register so whenever you will define a dependency property it will be backed by a CLR property so the CLR property name is set text which is right here all right and any like any particular property it will be having a set and get accessor so when you were setting the value it will just set text property all right set text property is the name of your dependency property with the value we know that value is a keyword which is by default available with this set accessor apart from that there's a get accessor which will be returning the value since the value the property which I'm making is of string type so I'm converting that to the string so here as well you can see that it is of string type this property is of string type now set text is the name of the property the type of that particular property is a string so I just specified that then after that you will have to specify the owner of that property owner means where this property is residing so this property is residing inside DP control class alright so name of that class and then the property metadata property metadata will store the metadata about the particular property first parameter is mandatory rest you can leave it blank and the first parameter which is here is basically the default value all right so if you are creating the value of string type you will have to pass something in a string like here i have passed a double quotes value similarly if it is an integer i will pass zero or some other default value all right so for now i have just passed this blank and after that you can see there is a method called on set text changed all right so it is basically containing the dependency project property dependency object and the dependency property changed event args means as soon as the value will be changed what will happen all right so basically inside that what i'm doing is first i will initialize the instance of this dp control that is the class all right and then on set text changed means on this particular event i will call i will call the e means argument e on set text change right here it's a method all right so this is nothing but the event so you will just have to pass and what you will take whatever the value is coming that will be taken to the text block all right so like whenever you are using this particular property this particular control this control will give you the property called set text when you will set the value in this set text it will be calling this on set text change method because of that the passed value whichever you will pass the value you will pass it will be assigned to this text block one dot text all right which is right there in this control so now once i have defined this i will save it i will build it so that all the changes will be uh, built up and now i can use this user control in my main window so what will i do here in the example you can see first of all I will have to add a local namespace that is the user controls alright user con WPF demo dot user controls 
where WPF demo is the name of my project and inside that there is a user controls uh, folder. After that, when you will pass like local, let me write that for you, like local, how to add the control. As soon as you will say local, it will give you the control name that is DP control. All right. And that DP control has the property called set text. All right. Which we just defined. This is nothing but the dependency property. All right. So set text lets me set any particular value like this is my text. So at that particular time, this on set change will be called because you have just passed the value you have changed the value and the value will be assigned to the text block one all right and that text block will be rendered to the main window so let me just execute this program and here you can see this is my text which i have assigned in the set text property of that custom control so this is how you can analyze like how important the dependency property is here in WPF whenever you want to perform some customized thing like wherever you when you are defining a custom control or doing any things like putting the triggers or some animation everywhere will be working with the dependency property itself.